as I was standing around and watching the presentations and just looking at the room, I saw that my slides have some information that I probably don't need to use to educate this room around unmet need and um, angiogenic driven diseases and also prevalence. I'm gonna slip, I'm gonna skip through those slides and just focus on who we are as an organization, our contributions to gene therapy, uh, our program, and the stepwise approach we took in terms of designing our program. Regenix Bio uh, is a public company. Obviously, that's the reason I'm in a public company showcase. These are our forward-looking statements. Um, I'll spend a little bit of time on who we are because a lot of people actually don't know the contributions we've done in the retina space to the gene therapy world, generally speaking. So today, Regenix Bio is a fully integrated clinical stage biotech company that has four clinical stage programs with the FDA approved product based on our technology as of two months ago that Novartis launched called Zolgensma for the treatment of spinal muscular atrophy. It's an IV based uh, treatment therapy. And I think if people have heard about uh, Novartis recently, they've been talking about this product as a game changing product. Um, and it is, and it, it's absolutely amazing what it's doing in the pediatric um, world of uh, diseases. We have 14 clinical stage product candidates in 20 partnered programs that just comes to show how many companies have actually licensed our technology, and I'll tell you why. Um, and that's all based on a technology platform that was discovered 10 years ago at the University of Pennsylvania by a gentleman called Jim Wilson uh, with a search into discovering next generation AAV vectors that were actually effective. AV2 and everything else that has existed so far has been safe, but the problem has been there haven't been effective vectors. So that's what really drove Jim Wilson to go out and discover natural vectors, and, and he, he saw that there were another 100 different serotypes that, that were out there that could be actually effective. So that constitutes the NAV technology platform. We have about 100 different vectors in that platform as a library that we use to develop our therapies and, and license them to other people based on if we are interested in or not in developing those therapies. So what is NAV technology platform? So the vectors that we have in our library provide higher gene expression, longer term gene expression, have a lower immune response, and have broad tissue selectivity. These are not just statements. This data has actually been validated and published in New England Journal of Medicine nature over a very long term in systemic diseases, in fact. This is where I'm gonna skip through. You all know there's a huge prevalence of all these retinal diseases. Um, and there's a huge unmet need around the burden of treatment and overall patient outcomes. So we have programs in ophthalmology that are focused on wet AMD, and we recently announced that we're also going into diabetic retinopathy um, and we have other programs in neurodegenerative diseases and, and metabolic disease, which I'm not gonna focus on here today. My focus will be 314. Um, I'm gonna slip, I'm gonna skip through these next four slides. I don't think we need to talk about it. But focus on RGX 314, which is our product candidate in development today in the clinic for the uh, treatment of wet AMD. Um, and I'll speak about this in a stepwise approach, the science that drove us to pick the vector first. We've compared AV8 to AV2, um, and we've clearly seen that the protein expression as well as transduction is way more efficient with AV8. Uh, I'm also going to give you some historical perspective on why other programs failed from Genzyme and Avalanche. There were very different approaches from the vector to the route of administration to the transgene that was used. With RGX314, we produce a transgene, we use a transgene to produce a very similar protein to ranibizumab, so we know the, the protein works. And then as we go through the dose, all the way to uh, expression, what you're seeing here uh, on the slide is also the non-human primate data showing that we achieve high levels of protein in a sustained fashion. This is to show the approaches, uh, the differences in approaches between subretinal and uh, intravitreal. Clearly, subretinal approach gives you better transduction and a higher expression. Translating all of that into why subretinal delivery, we believe, based on all the science, that with subretinal delivery, you can achieve a broader, broader coverage of transduction, more efficient transduction. 
Also, in the natural population, there are neutralizing antibodies. So if you want to avoid any of that neutralizing effect, you want to go into the subretinal space. So for AAB2, about 70% of patients are not eligible for treatment based on neutralizing antibodies. And for AAB8, which is our vector, about 30 to 50% of patients are estimated to be um, seropositive. So I'll get into the program itself. It's a phase 1-2A study that's designed to look at the safety. We have enrolled 42 patients to date in eight centers around the country. Uh, and we've already reported that we'll report the full data from all the five cohorts by the end of this year. But I'm going to focus on the first three cohorts right now. Um, I'll skip through this quickly. I think before I show you the data, it's important to understand the baseline demographics of the patients that were enrolled into this study. This patient population has, been, has had the disease for almost five years and have been treated very frequently with anti-VEGF injection before they got enrolled into our trial, almost 35 injections. And as they came into the trial and they enrolled into the protocol, physicians were actually allowed to treat these patients very free, very liberally at any sign of fluid or any type of vision loss because it was a phase 1-2A study. Some data on the safety side. It was very well tolerated. Uh, we haven't seen nothing to date uh, in 42 patients that have gone through the subretinal process. Uh, and I'll show you the protein expression data. So up to cohort 3, Remember, we've, we've just enrolled cohort four and five recently, and we'll present the data at the end of this year. So we saw, we saw a dose-dependent increase in protein expression from cohort one through cohort three, which sustained all the way through one year. And I'm gonna show you actually data on patients that were completely injection-free, which was about 50% of the patients. And those patients ended up gaining 10 letters and maintaining the CRT at about negative 59 microns. And this is a uh, longitudinal view for you to see the data, how visual acuity goes up and the OCT is maintained and keeps going down over time without any rescue injections. So what is the potential of a gene therapy such as RGX314? We believe it provides a foundational anti-VEGF therapy upon which now every patient can benefit either not receiving any injections at all or a few injections here and there, but ultimately modifying the disease to give the best visual outcomes for patients. Right on time, that's our team. This is where our technology has been licensed by many companies, large caps, mid caps, and small caps. With that, a thank you.